Ryan Lawrence, phillyvoice.com, covers the Phillies and gets a chance to see them up close and personal. Ryan, I know over the last couple of years, a lot of fans have been, you know, kind of apathetic towards uh, that team. They were ready to move on, and we finally got a glimpse of them moving on here. I, I guess the question that keep everybody keeps asking is, can they keep it up? Are we surprised? But what is surprising about what they've been able to do in terms of uh, winning games? Because, okay, maybe they can't keep it up. Maybe they will keep it up. I don't think we have the answer to that question. But what is surprising that they uh, on how they've gotten to this point? I mean, it's the pitching. I, I don't think that there's any secret to um, you know the, the success that they're having is that they're getting um, quality starting pitching almost daily. And you know, yesterday was you know was like maybe the first time in a while where it was like, whoa, starting pitcher to you know kind of got beat up. Um, that was the norm last year for <laughs> almost every day for the first few months of the season. So yeah, you flash forward 12 months, and you know you don't you don't have and you know all due respect to these guys, they're major league they were major league players, but. You know, Dustin McGowan and Sean O'Sullivan and, you know, all these guys, Philly Beaumont actually made a start for them last year. They had a lot of guys that made starts for them last year that probably had no business in a big league rotation. You know, now they actually have not only young talent, but, you know, they have guys like Hellickson. Uh, you know, they, they have some veterans in there, too. Or, you know, I guess most of that rotation now, I think about it, is young guys. Uh, you know, Charlie Morton got hurt. But, yeah, they have real talent in that rotation. And the bullpen has certainly pitched um, well beyond anybody thought you know, especially coming out of spring training in that first series in, in Cincinnati, no one thought this was anywhere near close to possible that the bullpen was going to be this trustworthy. So I think it's just that. It's, it's that simple. It's been pitching and defense, you know, and that's, that's kind of what Plentak said. Uh, you know, that's kind of how he built that this team over the winter, getting guys like Borges, who I know people are ready to see go. But, you know, he has been valuable to them in the defense that he's provided. You know, they've won all these one-run games. A lot of these balls that these guys are getting to in the outfield really make make the difference at the end of the day. No um, yeah, and eventually they're going to need offense. But, yeah, pitching and defense has been th- th- crucial for them. Yeah, there's no doubt. I, I think that point is, is very valid is the defense. And you wonder, then, what's going to happen when a Cody Ashy comes back and because uh, he'll obviously add, I guess, minimal more offense, not a whole heck of a lot, but, you know, at least uh, major league yeah, and offense. Yeah, he's still a developing player. You know, he, who, who knows? I mean, maybe he is ready for a breakout year. I mean, you know, he hasn't had, you know, yeah, he's still young enough that I don't want to write off Cody Ash. I know that he's, yeah, if you, you weigh the odds, you know, if he's going to be in this lineup this time next year, they are looking very good. But, you know, I don't want to give up on him either. But, yeah, I think you plug him in left field um, where, you know, there's another, both corner outfield positions, they really haven't found the guy. And, and Borges has been the guy in right field because of the defense he gives. So, yeah, I mean, I think you plug Ashy in, and, and, yeah, maybe you do get a little bit more offense out of your your outfield. Yeah, and then, but, you know, the question really becomes, all right, what does he do to them defensively and how that changes some things? You know, it is, you're right, a very interesting balance because the offense uh, is just so limited right now. They brought up Joseph. What else can they do? I mean, is this, they're just, do they not care? I mean, do they say, look, whatever we get out of this year, we're, we're thrilled with, or do you think they legitimately say, you know what? Because of the pitching and defense, let's try to do something in house if we can. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't think anything related to their record right now or their record a month from now is going to change the course. Like, I don't, I don't think they're necessarily going to say. I mean, I, no, I'm, I'll just say for sure they're not going to promote Nick Williams or J.P. Crawford or any of these guys any earlier than they think should be here because of their record right now. They, they don't. Then they're not going to lose sight of the bigger picture in mind. Um, you know, it'll be, hey, listen. If they're still however many games over five games over five hundred uh, two months from now, then more power to them. And you know maybe they go out and, and they will you know go out and get a veteran outfielder or someone they can plug in. But again, they're not going to get anybody that that they don't see as a part of their future. If they're going to pursue somebody before the trade deadline, you know. And again, we're all we're talking about hypotheticals that they're still five six games over five hundred by then. Um, but yeah, they, they won't. They're not going to mortgage the farm again. The big picture is still that they're rebuilding for you know 2017, 2018, and beyond. You know they're not going to you know give away prospects at the trade deadline this year just because of you know the team's kind of overachieving right now. Ryan Lawrence is with us. Phillyvoice.com. Check out his Phillies coverage there. You know I think what's interesting is you mentioned guys like McGowan and Sean O'Sullivan and Jerome Williams. They were trotting guys like that out every fifth day. When Morton got hurt, they went to Adam Morgan. And it seems that the best part about what they're doing is they have a lot of depth at that position. There's a lot of young guys that you're anticipating somewhere down the road. My question really is, of these younger pitchers, 
Some of them are going to have to start going to the bullpen, right? Or, or there's not enough room in the rotation, it would seem like, for as many young pitchers, the depth they have at that position. I mean, that's funny because I get this question a lot, too, about, like, uh, you know, are they going to move so-and-so to this position because they, you know, would already have a catcher, like, you know, with uh, Alfaro and Knapp. And, no, you're not, you're not going to – I mean, you're not going to rush guys into roles. I mean, for example, with Knapp and Alfaro, you know, the more quality catchers you have, the better. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that's a good problem to have. The same thing with starting pitching. It's a great problem to have starting pitching depth. I mean, we've already saw, you know, one guy went down and Charlie Morton. You know, these guys get hurt. Um, some guys struggle. I mean, Eikhoff probably hasn't pitched as well as uh, he thinks he should. And, you know, if, if he struggles in the next few weeks, you know, who's to say he doesn't get demoted? I'm not saying that I think that's going to happen. I'm just saying that, you know, a lot of things happen in starting pitching. You rarely go a full season with just five or six guys. More often than not, even when you have a, a strong rotation, guys get hurt. Guys struggle. Guys that you don't expect struggle. I mean, remember – Brett Myers getting sent down to, to, to AAA in what in 2008 when you know he was already established big leaguer. So just things like that happen and guys get hurt. So you know I don't think they're going to all of a sudden say, hey, you know, Vince Velasquez, it's been great, but you know we're going to make you a ninth inning guy or eighth inning guy. Yeah. Um, you know you're you're going to try to have as much depth as you can. You know I don't really know if any of those guys, the starting pitchers down in AAA, are ready for promotion yet. Now maybe come July or August, you know maybe they'll be pushing the envelope then. But then also that might be a time where you say, you know what. Vince Velasquez, you gave us this many innings. We're going to kind of ease you up, or hey, maybe we'll try a six-man rotation to kind of ease the burden and, and the inning limits, you know, for some of these young pitchers. So there's a lot of different ways you can kind of uh, maneuver it. And and hey, if they do, if they're really that um, overwhelmed by pitching depth, they can trade a guy. I mean, I don't think they'll do that, but yeah, if if you, I, I don't know, just to pick a name out of the hat, but. You know, if another team all of a sudden comes and says, yeah, we like what we've seen from Jack Eflin, our scout, you know, we'll give you a uh, minor league player X who's also a prospect, you know, maybe, maybe they match up that way. But I'm just saying, I, yeah, I don't think you're going to rush into taking anybody out of a starting pitching role because any pitcher you want to get 200 innings out of, you know, more than making them a 70 inning guy a year guy. So you always want to get, you always want to exercise everything you can to make sure they're a starting pitcher before you try to make them a reliever. Yeah, well, and, and you know, you also wonder the long term. You know, if you have Velasquez and you got Nola and Eikhoff and Thompson somewhere down the road, and you know, there's probably you know, uh, which guys project better down the road as a as a relief pitcher that maybe they want to start transitioning. You know, because the bullpen has been pretty good this year. One guy who I think has stood out is Neris. Uh, where do you see him? Do you see him as a, a surprise, a guy that, oh, I like this guy, he's got a future? Because those bullpen guys are hit or miss, right? Some of the years, you know, they just come out of nowhere, then the next year they uh, they falter. But is he a guy uh, that, that you know, has a, a future in that spot? Yeah, it's funny. I mean, we, we were talking to Matt Klontek about that the other day, and, and he made a point that's really, you know, a point that's been made plenty of times. But, you know, he just said it the other day, is that, you know, bullpen in general is volatile year to year. You know, guy, you rarely the the guys that are great for a six year run and great every year are few and far between. More often than not, guys are going to go up and down. I mean, look at Ken Giles right now. I mean, Ken Giles for a year and a half was probably one of the five to eight you know most dominant relievers in baseball. You know, since his promotion a couple of years ago to you know through last year, and now he's struggling really bad. So, you know, you just have to be careful um, over-evaluing guys, you know, based on, say, five or six months. And, yeah, Hector Nares has been great. But you know what I thought about Hector Nares the other day or within the last week? He could be a trade chip. I mean, why not? It, you know, if you're – you know, listen, they're a quote-unquote contending team right now. But if the other scenario folds and two months from now they're six and seven games under 500 rather than six and seven games over 500 – he probably could be very valuable to a team, you know, that, that's looking for a eighth inning guy or a ninth inning guy if they think he could be that. Um, and yeah, so you know, you're always evaluating your guys not only for what they can do for you, but what they have on the open market. I mean, hey, but that's exactly what they did with Ken Giles. You know, he was a young team under club control, mm. um, not even arbitration eligible yet, but they evaluated as him that you know he is already one of the better relief pitchers in baseball we can get this value for him. It's a no-brainer not to, to do that. So, you know, I, I just think with the relief pitchers, that, that's all, also to me, I think, the last place you address a team when you, you think you're ready to, to win. I mean, look at that 08 team. You know, they kind of built that bullpen on the fly. You know, they, Brad Lidge was one of the last main pieces they, you know, they added to that team. He was added, you know, right before the season, or I guess the winter meetings before that. 
And, uh, you know, even through the season, Scott Ayer was a the guy they added midway through. So you know, I think that bullpen is something you kind of build toward the end of when you're ready to contempt. All right, uh, the Phillies uh, continuing. They've won seven out of the last eight series, uh, which is amazing in itself. Uh, they lose yesterday, but they start a three-game set uh, at Citizens Bank Park against the Marlins. So uh, we'll see them back in action right back at home after 19 of 22 on the road, finally getting to play some home games. And for them to be 12 and 10 on the road after 26 wins, there's another interesting stat about a team filled with crazy stats this year. Ryan Lawrence over at phillyvoice.com with more on the Phillies' surprising start to the year. Thanks, Ryan. Yeah, no problem, man.